WRVS 89.9, your community voice on Elizabeth City's best variety of R&B. More of your music is on the way, but it's the fourth Wednesday of the month, and it's time for Conversations with the Chancellor. It is returned, and I am excited because right now sitting across from me is the Chancellor of Elizabeth City State University, Dr. Kerry Dixon, and we have not talked since the CIAA tournament in yes. Baltimore, uh, your schedule was busy then, it's yes. busy now, yes. but I know you had a good time, so welcome back to the show. Yes, it's been a long time, Clay, but I'm glad <laughs> to be back on the air, and uh, Baltimore was absolutely wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great experience. Uh, the weather was great. It held up pretty much. You know, no snow. We had, you know, a couple of days of rain, right. but that was fine and fine, and, you know, it was just a really good experience for our men's basketball team. Uh, you know, they won the first game, mm-hmm. went into the second game, lost just by a few points. Correct. But, you know, under the direction and leadership of John Richardson, I, I just saw a, a change in that team. You know, yeah. the team was very focused and very driven, mm-hmm. and that was good. They were full of Viking pride. And then our women went all the way to the championship yes, again, did. Clay. Three so years in a row they made it to that row. game. <laughs> three years in a row under the leadership of Coach Tynesha Lewis yeah. and – you know, it was it was just good. It was good to see our women. Mm-hmm. You know, they were playing hard and and uh, you know they were excited yeah. to be enjoying out there, enjoying themselves, enjoying you know? themselves. And so the Vikings showed up. Yes, they when did. I tell you, we showed up that and showed Saturday? out. Ooh. Yes, busloads <laughs> of Vikings came to Baltimore. So we definitely had the support, and you know, our women um, did come up short, just a few points mm-hmm. and. Uh, but they, but it was a good game. They play hard, and you know I'm always proud of our student athletes, yeah. both our men and our women, and our student leaders yes. were there. They were all um, there, sitting right yeah, there. Yeah, they were there, and them. they were participating. Mm-hmm. And students came in for uh, the career fair and and other things that the CIAA offers. But I have to tell you. What blew me away is our D lights. <laughs> our D lights look good they and did. they performed, yeah. they tumbled, they did uh, stunts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the, comp- the cheer competition, I made sure it was on my calendar. <laughs> and I made sure to be there right there yeah. on the front row cheering on our D lights. Yeah. And they actually performed first mm-hmm. and did an amazing job. So to say, you know, we were all proud to be Vikings yes, at indeed. the CIAA tournament. We were definitely proud, and we were wearing our Viking blue and cheering on our student athletes, mm-hmm. our student leaders, our D lights, the band, yes, the sound of class, sound of class sounded wonderful. wonderful. Yes, they, they always show up. They always cheer on <clears throat> our student athletes during the games, and they play well. Um, you know, they play great songs and gets the cl- you know get the crowd involved in uh, you know cheering on the team. So thank you. Shout out to the so- sound of class as well. And, uh, you know, it's just good to see alumni. I saw a lot yes, of alumni. I'm sure you did. Yes, and um, you saw some that I haven't seen in a while, you know, at some of the events that I had to attend. But as I mentioned, you know, CIAA is work for me. You know, I have a <laughs> – not a eight, vacation. No, no, I have an eight-page itinerary, uh, you know, every day schedule, you know, every mm. events every day. Now, one thing that made it different this year – for the CIAA is I actually had to leave on Wednesday, Clay, mm-hmm. and fly to Raleigh. That's right. Yeah. I had to leave in the middle of the CIAA tournament and fly to Raleigh for the UNC Board of Governors mm-hmm. meeting. Mm-hmm. But it was for a very important reason. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I left, flew back to, flew to Raleigh for the UNC Board of Governors meeting mm-hmm. and our very own Dr. Kodeet Rawat mm. was re- was awarded the Holzhauser Award. Yeah, I saw that. ECSU has never won an award like that for a faculty member, mm. and it was one of the highest distinctive awards. And uh, I was so proud of Dr. Rawat. So I had to be there to see him get that gold medal put around mm-hmm. his neck for the work that he's doing for our aviation program and to meet his wife and children. And uh, just to show that Viking pride uh, at the Board of Governors meeting. So I flew to Raleigh, Clay, mm. midweek, mm. then turned around and flew back to Baltimore. <laughs> to you talk finish, about a travel schedule. <laughs> yes, to finish the CIAA tournament. And uh, so I was tired, yeah, I'll I tell you. But it was, it. you know, pushing through to support the Vikings. That's what it's all about. The CIAA really takes over Baltimore. Yeah, they did a really good job. Yeah. And, you know, this year our title sponsor was Food Lion. Mm-hmm. And so Food Lion, uh, you know, contributes to our food pantry on campus uh, for 
uh, food insecurities um, that some of our students experience. So, you know, it's really good to partner with them and they be the title sponsor this year. And um, but, yeah, they really Baltimore, the city of Baltimore, um, the mayor, the governor got to meet the governor, Wes Moore. Um, they really showed up and really showed how much uh, CIAA meant to them as a as a city and and all that we bring mm-hmm. to Baltimore, you know, as far as the economic impact sure. that they see. And so um, they were very, very welcoming, always has been. So it was really good to see all of them and to see the banners, as you said, on the streets, to see the marquees lit up uh, with our very, you know, with our respective CIAA campuses uh, displayed on that. So Really, really nice time. Really nice time. Fun Fest was great. I don't oh, know yeah. if you made it to Fun I, Fest. I was able but, to catch a little bit. Yeah, of it, that yeah. was great too. I did a little shopping, Clay. No, no, I had, I had to. Go, I had to go to the vendors a did little bit. Did you do a little or a lot? Just, Come just on, a little. I, I was, I was well disciplined this, you know, this uh-huh. time. Just a little. Uh-huh. I got um, a, an ECSU sweater mm-hmm. um, that was uh, gift, gifted to me. I put that on social media and thanked the vendor for that. Mm-hmm. And also had to pick up a, a couple of Delta Sigma Theta. Uh, items. Can't get away from it. <laughs> I can't get away from it. Can't get away from it. Got me a couple of luggage tags. I and, like it. I like yeah, it. yeah. So it, it was nice. It was yeah. nice. I like to, you know, support the vendors any way I can. Yeah. Not too much though. I, I got to, you know, I had to have some money in my pocket coming back from Baltimore. Got that right. Plus the food options. You got to yes, really figure yes. out where you're going to eat too. Uh, again, congratulations to the ECSU women's basketball team, Coach Tanisha Lewis, and the brand new head coach of the ECSU men's basketball team, John Richardson III, and the men's team for representing ECSU so well down there yes. and up there in Baltimore. Uh, it's conversations with the Chancellor, Clay Mercer, with ECSU Chancellor Dr. Kerry Dixon. The Day of Giving is something that I know our listeners have heard over the years, and yes. we always put a lot of emphasis on that because it is important for the listeners and the, and the Viking alums and the fans of ECSU to give on that day of April 18th. Uh, we exceeded our goal last year, yes. and we're hoping to do the same thing this year, and it's really important that people give on this day. Yeah, it's very important. Day of Giving is um, one of, you know, the most important days um, that we, uh, you know, celebrate because this is an opportunity for our our donors, our friends of the institution, our alumni, um, sponsors of various um, uh, partnerships from whether that's corporate or independent small businesses uh, to give back to ECSU. But more importantly, the funding goes towards uh, student scholarships. And, uh, you know, our students definitely need um, any type of assistance they can get. And what I would prefer is that assistance that they don't have to pay back. Uh, So, you know, grants and donations during the day of giving are very much appreciated because it does make a difference in a student's life who um, is unable to meet uh, their bill and to uh, help them to enroll in ECSU. So I would encourage everyone, all the listeners, please give. And there's no amount too little. Uh, You know, instead of getting that cup of coffee, if you want to give the $10 (laughs) on day of giving, give it. You know, all we do is we post your name to say thank you. We never post the amount. So give from your heart and help a student at ECSU uh, with their education and completing their education. Uh, And so I would just say, please help us spread the word. Let everyone know day of giving is April 18th this year. And we want to see... All the donors come in and, and, and put some competitions together. I agree. You know, at one point we had competitions mm-hmm. against the D9 fraternities mm-hmm. yes. and sororities. <laughs> I mean, there could be some competition against the, you know, between the churches or between yeah, the nonprofits, so. you yeah. know. Put some competition with it, and uh, let's see who can outdo who yeah, in, yeah. Uh, in donating on this day because it does go to a very, very worthy cause, mm-hmm. and that is the co- the scholarships that are needed for our students here at Elizabeth City State University. So I say thank you in advance for anything that you can give from your heart. Very much appreciated. Uh, one thing I love about the Day of Giving is you can give to various departments and specific yes. departments. Of course, WRVS 89.9 is there, but yes. there's so many different departments you can give, and it all comes together to make the Day of Giving very special for the entire university. So yes. again, April 18th is the day, the ECSU Day of Giving. And of course, you can get more details about this and so much more online at ecsu.edu. 
Conversations with the Chancellor here on WRVS 89.9. ECSU Chancellor Dr. Carrie Dixon is with us right now. And Founders Day is something that we want to kind of talk about. Because yes. there's always a lot of uh, great people that come in for the Founders Day. Not only the gala, but of yes. course the convocation is special too. And yes. I know you have a good time anytime. Because <laughs> everybody comes and, and they enjoy themselves at the gala. But the convocation was very special too. I enjoyed uh, that whole event, and uh, we haven't had a chance really to talk about it. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your experience with Founders Day. Yeah, Founders Day was absolutely amazing once again this year, and uh, we had Founders Day on that Friday mm-hmm. uh, before the gala, and um, Otis, Superintendent Otis yes. Smallwood, so was our <laughs> keynote. Yes, our keynote. Yes. And it was so good to welcome him back home. And to celebrate 133 years of existence here at Elizabeth City State University. So we were just so excited about that. It was a great convocation. Uh, Dr. Smallwood gave a wonderful, inspiring message, talked about his childhood and talked about what ECSU meant to him. From the heart. From the heart, yes. And and his career and his successes now. And he's leading Bertie. Uh, county and uh, as superintendent and he's doing a wonderful job so we're so proud of him and then the next day clay Mm -hmm. we had a a magnificent time (laughs) at the founders day scholarship gala and you know we set a goal of raising a hundred and sixty one thousand dollars And we exceeded our oh, goal. Great. That is the grand total was $162,150. Wow. And wow. we were so excited. Mm. So it's so good that uh, we had a, a, a wonderful turnout. And I'll tell you, I was a little concerned because it was raining. It yeah. was raining hard you know that how night. Weather can kind of, it can, <laughs> and you know, it can, weather can yes, definitely can change people people's minds. They're <laughs> like, oh, I don't know if I want to go out in that rain. But people showed up and it was wonderful. The room was packed. We had over 400 guests. Wow. And they were all there in support of our honorees and in support of raising money for ECSU. And let me just tell you some of our honorees. I mean, so. very, very uh, distinct mm-hmm. uh, group of people, distinguished group of people. And so we had. Phyllis Elmore from the class of 82 was honored. We had Senator Warren Daniel who was honored, who also had a has a, a daughter who's a graduate nice. of ECSU, our aviation program. We had Dr. Lenore Jarvis Mackey, class of 1966 mm-hmm. in the house, mm-hmm. looking fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> we also had Senator Gladys Robinson, uh, who has been very supportive of HBCUs. Mm-hmm. We had uh, Mr. James Swimpson, mm-hmm. uh, the class of 62. Now, he was unable to be with us. He was recovering from um, a situa- an accident, but his daughter was here. Nice. And so she spoke on his behalf, and we're so proud and so happy and, and just continue to pray for his, continu- sure. his, his healing and, and his getting better, his recovery. And then we had the Gwendolyn Sanders, you had to put the class there, of 1977. <laughs> so Gwen Sanders retired recently mm-hmm. from ECSU. She came back as one of our honorees. So it was so wonderful to see her and uh, just to acknowledge all that she has done for ECSU over the years. And so just a group of honorees were just a very uh, distinguished but amazing group of people who champion ECSU no matter where they are and have always been so supportive of Elizabeth City State University. So it was so good to award them with the Chancellor's Legacy Award, and uh, they were just a beautiful group of people. Conversations with the Chancellor, and uh, right now I'm excited because when I first heard about the Blueprint Tour, I was like, that is a that is a nice ring. It's a nice name. It works very well, and the ECSU Blueprint Tour has already made a couple of stops Just talk about the tour itself and uh, really the reaction that you've received from everyone involved. Yeah, so the blueprint is titled Viking Blueprint, and it's it's an effort that I envisioned to take ECSU to the people across North Carolina. Mm -hmm. So instead of us sitting, waiting for them to come to us, I wanted to put us on the road. Mm -hmm. So our first trip was Charlotte, then from Charlotte was Raleigh. And then we're going to Winston-Salem. And, you know, it's a very exciting opportunity because we are bringing our faculty, our staff. um, You know, we want people to know ECSU. So we spend time talking about ECSU. We show a very nice video that was produced um, in-house here by the, uh, the communications department. 
and we help them realize that ECSU can be a reality for anyone and that we live, you know, our institution is in northeastern North Carolina. We're surrounded by the beautiful water, waterfront downtown, you know, so we go all out and telling everything, all the good things about ECSU and the access piece, access to a quality education at an affordable price with NC Promise. And so uh, it gives us an opportunity to do that. But what I love the most is we have taken faculty with us. Uh, We have taken the financial aid office, the director of financial aid, the director of admissions is there. And we do on-site acceptances. Mm. So students who have been admitted, of course, are encouraged to to come. But also prospective students who may have some options and they're trying to figure out. We want to seal the deal. And so we want them to see what they would gain out of coming and enrolling at ECSU. So I'm very happy that our faculty and staff stepped up. You know, we had tables by departments and and academic programs and faculty were there to answer questions on the spot. We had our police department represented for any uh, families who wanted to know about campus safety and security. I mean, we had everyone there where they could ask any question they wanted to ask and get the answer right there on the spot. That's important. And we also gave out three scholarships, Clay. Very nice. Yeah, three scholarships, um, $1,000 each mm. for so to cover tuition yes. for the first year yeah, yeah. for students. So that was exciting because yeah, parents, that. you know, we called the name out. They ran up to the front, <laughs> you know, with their student. Yes, they were very excited. And, you know, so those things, we brought some excitement. We played a little game. Okay. We played Name That Tune. Interactive. I like Yeah, this. we had it interactive. And so people really loved it. Now, yeah. one thing I have to tell you about Charlotte. Okay. So I was a little nervous, Clay. Why? Because Charlotte, we only had 20 RS- RSVPs. So, you know, this was my, you know, idea to sure, do this. I and I it. said, uh-oh, <laughs> driving to Charlotte, you know, from Elizabeth City. I was like, oh, no, nobody's going to show up. <laughs> right. Why, you know, did I do the right thing? But it was absolute, um, absolutely amazing. When we got there, mm-hmm. there were so many people. We had to bring in six more rows of chairs. Oh, I love it. I love it. So the room was packed. That's great. That's great. Standing room only. Yeah. And so Charlotte really showed out. Mm-hmm. And so it was great, though, because, you know, as as parents and, and, their, and our prospective students were leaving, I said, well, how did you hear about it? They said, the radio. Very nice. The radio, nice. Clay. I love it. So radio we made is sure, yes, the radio. <laughs> so we made sure to put, That's great. you know, advertise on the radio. Yeah. We advertise on social media. Mm-hmm. I did a video inviting people, letting them know that I was going to be present. So mm-hmm. if they had any questions for me. And so it turned out great. And that's part of our effort to grow enrollment for North Carolinians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We want to focus on growing our enrollment in state. And so taking ECSU on the road. The Viking Blueprint was the best way to do that. And we're going to do it again in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Um, This one's going to be transfer Mm student-focused. And we're going to be working with Weight Tech Mm -hmm. in Raleigh. And we're going to, um, you know, set up very similar that we've done before for undergraduates, for transfer students. So this is going to be very exciting and very beneficial to us and to the prospective families that we're trying to uh, introduce mm-hmm. to Elizabeth City State University. It's almost like taking the Welcome Center on, on the road. On the road, Letting people exactly. experience it at their community and their location as opposed to them having to come here. We're taking it to them, and I'm happy to hear that the blueprint will continue. And yes. it'll be interesting, and, and you, it's probably a little extra to be thinking about down the line, but of course we've, you know, Raleigh and Charlotte and Winston-Salem, are there other cities within North Carolina that we're interested in taking the blueprint to? Is that something that we've thought about here? So yeah, we want to do this again in the fall. And uh, we're going to look at the reason we chose Raleigh, Charlotte and Winston-Salem is because we looked at the data to see where are our students coming from across North Carolina. And those three were the top three um, areas that our students are coming from Mm -hmm. over the last three to four years. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to focus there. But also what was beneficial is when you go to Charlotte, Raleigh, Winston-Salem, you also think about those surrounding counties. And we wanted to make sure we were in a location where, you know, there were counties that were surrounding counties that were less than 30 minutes away. Sure. So we have students who came from um, Gastonia and students who came from, um, you know, other areas around Charlotte, around Raleigh. 
And so we are, you know, really focused on uh, putting ECSU on the road, as you said, taking the Welcome Center out there and letting people see it. Uh, and so we will do it again. Mm-hmm. I love it. It, it. It's a wonderful tour. And uh, I've, I've been watching on social media all the videos that you have done personally yes. and then the videos <laughs> from the actual event. And I love what I see. So it's a beautiful thing. And I think Good. it's very, very helpful. So I'm looking forward to seeing the future of this one. I think it's going to be great. Yes. And I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to take ECSU on the road and let yes. people experience it right there in their home community. So it's a beautiful thing. Conversations with the Chancellor. And uh, Chancellor, we are coming to the end of today's show. And this is usually the time where I give you the microphone and whatever's on your heart and on your mind. Just talk to the listeners a little bit and let them know what's happening in the world of our wonderful chancellor. Yes. So, you know, great things are happening at ECSU. I'm very proud of the progress that we have made over the last almost six years, Clay. It'll be six years for me, April 9th, when I started as interim. So we've come a long way, and it's because of the support that we have from our listeners, from our alumni, from our community, our friends of ECSU, our faculty, staff, and students. Thank you so much for always being there, showing up, and supporting ECSU. And I just encourage everyone to uh, definitely uh, give back. Mark your calendars for April 18th. Give back on our day of giving. And as Clay mentioned, you know, WRVS serves a great role um, in our community with information, with music, with interviews and other things. And they are one of the options where you can donate to directly and you can figure, you know, you can determine where you want your money to go within the university. And a lot of these areas will turn the funding into scholarships for students to support um, our students as they volunteer, or as they work in the various areas, and then also for gap funding to seal the deal for those who need that uh, money that their families may not be able to afford to give in order for them to return to school or to even come to school. So please continue to help us. And like I said, your name will be listed, but the amount you give will not. So anything helps, everything helps, and just give from your heart. And again, thank you for your support for Viking Athletics. Thank you for your support of Viking Academics. Thank you for your support of Vikings, you know, doing things with you in partnership. If you have a small business, if you're an entrepreneur, I'm sure at some point in time we have done some business with you or will be doing some business. So thank you so much to everyone who supports ECSU. I am very thankful, very grateful for ECSU and for all the things that we have accomplished. And I look forward to accomplishing even more in the future. Viking pride. Yeah, I love it, man. And again, listeners, we want to thank you for serving this radio station and supporting this radio station for over 38 years. We just celebrated back on March 18th, our 38th anniversary. And when again, Day of Giving is coming up, and we want you to support the radio station as well as everything that you love about ECSU. Chancellor, uh, there was so much to talk about, but when you return next month, Viking Fest is, yes. is on the horizon. Yes, Commencement it is. is Goodness gracious. Yes, like... there's so much coming up. <laughs> so many great things. <laughs> well, we'll have a lot to talk about. Thank you so much for making time for us. And I know the listeners appreciate it. We appreciate all you do. And we'll catch up with you next month. Definitely. Thank you, Clay. Look forward to talking to you all again next month. Yes, indeed. Now, listen, listeners, I have the beautiful ones from Prince coming up right after this. So make sure you stay with <laughs> us here on Afternoon Delight Radio Show.